check that we are going live. <coughs> And we are on. Good evening, everybody. My name is Hethel Doshi. I'm an organizational psychologist. And um, as part of an ongoing initiative to support mental well-being in our community, we are hosting a series of interviews with amazing people, just like you and I. Uh, and today, we have Manish and Raj. Uh, they're both ProPay partners and associates of uh, CNET and G. Uh, so, a very interesting story about why they're here, but let me just tell you a little bit of a story about them. So there's this old adage that says friends should not get into business together. I'm sure some of you have thought about it before, and then you thought it might be too much of a risk in your friendship to get into business. Uh, but these two decided to do it. Uh, Manish and Raj, they met in their pre-university days sometime in 1990. That was years ago. They started a venture sometime in 2001, and they have actually grown their business super cleverly. Uh, navigated over, navigated through over three recessions in the past. Um, and the reason why I'm so excited to have them here is because it really is um, very, very hard to keep personal and professional relationships uh, at such levels of strength. And two of them have made it for over 19 years, uh, tomorrow being their 19th anniversary. So um, thank you so much, Raj and Manish, for being here. Thank you, Hito. Yeah. Thanks, Hito. <laughs> So um, Raj is a, if, if you don't know him, um, then I don't know who you are. He's, uh, he should be also doing a little bit of comedy on the side. Anyone who knows him would say that. Uh, and we're going to do some cool stuff. Raj is going to lead some cool stuff towards the end no, of the No, 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 no. <laughs> Make sure you stay, stay till the end, end, end for it. So um, can you tell us something unique about yourselves before we get into the partnership? Uh, Manish or Raj, either one. Manish. Okay. Uh, I think we have similar passions, uh, uh, both uh, in terms of corporate and in terms of personal as well. I yeah. think uh, uh, to start with, we, we were friends uh, before we became business partners. Right. So while the business is 19 years old, uh, we are 30 years old friends, right? Wow. So both me and Raj, we kind of laughed it out with our spouses that uh, we tend to know each other more than... We know our spouses yeah. and that, that becomes so much a, a, a nice joke because at times uh, Raj will tell Alpa about me yeah. and Alpa would know about me better and likewise yeah. it happens that way. And <laughs> it's more interesting because I and Shuba, Raj's wife, are very similar and Alpa and Raj are very similar. <laughs> so that's something very interesting we have as a combination. That's awesome. That's really awesome. Yeah. Raj, what about you? Something unique that you want to share? Okay, so so uh, what you have already, or, or the way you have introduced me at the uh, early stage, uh, and that's me. So if you want to know the real Raj, that's on the Facebook. Yeah. Uh, my my philosophy has always been uh, work life is like uh, you know an actor on a stage. Uh, we are mm -hmm. all acting on stage, but that's not us. So right. uh, work life is uh, what you see me on LinkedIn. Very serious topics, <laughs> intellectual discourse. <laughs> Uh, but to me, you know, end of the day, uh, work or no work, uh, we should be ourselves. So uh, yeah. that's why Facebook is a platform for people to get to know me as I am. Right. Uh, but on LinkedIn is the other side of me. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so about me and Manish, unique part is like, you know, he, he spoiled the fun. Uh, so although the business is 19 years old, we still behave like 19 years old. So, uh, uh, yeah. So off the scene, uh, we talk nonsense, which is, you know, <laughs> our, our, uh, with our friends, we chill, we are, uh, we are like, small kids we play a fool and, and jokers you should know that uh but when it comes to work so it's the same uh, theory right when it comes to work we are very serious yeah of work and, we play. yeah i think that's uh, i think that's just really magical that you have sieved in friendship with business and now even in your obviously in your personal uh relationships as well and um I think maybe a quick introduction about what you do. What what do you guys do before before we get into how did you meet and 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 so on and so forth? What 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 do you guys do? What what does CNG and ProPay partners do? So I will discuss on CNG and let Manish discuss more on ProPay. So CNG is a uh, global executive search firm. So we have basically uh, management recruitment. So we focus on um, recruiting mid to senior level candidates uh, for for various clients in the energy, renewable energy, pharmaceutical, consumer goods, uh, banking and finance sectors. 
Yeah. Uh, we are a member firm of IRC Global Executive Search Partner. So, so we, now, we are now the world's largest, what you call the world's largest owner run search firm. Right. Right. So, right. If, you, if you speak to Monica in Singapore, she's the owner. If you speak to Grace, she's the owner. And, and we are proud to say that 43% of our firms are owned by women partners. Yeah. You're right. a big so, champion. You're a big champion for diversity. diversity. You're a big champion yeah. for also women and putting a lot more women at board level as part of yeah. your recruitment strategy. And you've done exactly. an exceptional job partnering with a lot of different associations to get there. Um, so yay, yay, we have male champion over here. And Manish, uh, so Raj, I guess in summary, uh, executive search. Um, and Manish, what, what do you do? I, I think within the similar space of uh, professional services, uh, we support our clients in mainly two areas. Uh, first being payroll services. So we provide payroll services over 100 global clients uh, across ASEAN in multiple yeah. countries. Uh, on a month-to-month -month basis, we serve more than 10,000 employees a month to ensure that they get paid on time accurately. Right. Uh, apart from that, we also have the employee mobility solutions where we move workforce across different locations uh, for clients. Uh, for example, the oil and gas industry, uh, right. where we uh, manage all the third-party workforce for the client on their behalf uh, right. under the managed services platform. Right. These are two verticals that we support. And we have a team of about 30 uh, people in the office, uh, ensuring that you know all uh, both the vertical uh, that we support our clients are working reliably on time, in including now, right? With the right, situation yeah. that we have, right? The KPIs doesn't change whether you're working in one location or 30 different locations. Right. So in essence, both of you in the space of talent, one is with regards to executive search, the other one is with regards to mobility. And Manish, I guess you win because you're paying people their salaries. <laughs> <laughs> on time, on time. That's a great <laughs> pressure is a pressure, yes. We're really making people happy every single month, every single exactly. month. Exactly. Thanks to the uh, team. It's a very important <laughs> job over here. So as you were growing up, you know, in your teenage years, I'm assuming 30 years ago, you're probably in the teens, late teens. Um, what was life like and how did you end up having this conversation about partnership? Okay. In the, uh, early, in the early age, is it? Yeah, you're probably quite young when you first met in your PU days, like 19, maybe 18. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Manishkin. Yeah. So what was life like and how did you end up having this conversation about uh, partnering up? Actually, it's interesting. At the high school, uh, Raj and me met at uh, school revision classes, the uh, tuition class, yeah? And right. uh, we, we were supported by a very good mathematics tu tu uh, tutor. Yeah. Uh, and we, we got along very well during the class uh, sessions. But that was a very short encounter because it's just before the high school exams. And right. uh, what surprises is just a year after that, we met at the uh, varsity where yeah. we were registering and we kind of got acquainted again together. Right. Uh, coincidentally, we became roommates from year one. And that's when we, I think the bonding started a little bit uh, warmer to that yeah. interactions where we got to know each other much better. Uh, yeah. Our passions were, you know, uh, was, were coming out very freely. We were talking about things. Uh, and, and from there, I think we started the journey of uh, going to, uh, you know, understanding each other better. You know, in yeah. the process of being students in the first year, leaving home, uh, meeting a new buddy, uh, yeah. all the things uh, takes place, right? The emotional yeah. uh, uh, connection and all that. And I think we, we got along very well, I must say. Yeah. Uh, so till now, our varsity friends think that uh, uh, we are one together. Wow! Like 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 twins or buddies. Yes. Yeah. And, um, like that, yeah. That, that that that's quite interesting. So I, I'm sh I'm pretty sure Raj wasn't really in tuition studying la. I'm sure he was doing something else. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the Unlike marriage stories, business partnership stories tend to have the same uh, story la. Right, because yeah. I, I guess in a marriage, you'd be like, "Oh, that's his story." You know, it's different from my story. But Raj, you would say that's how you kind of met each other as well. Yeah, um, and and both of us placed very uh, important emphasis on uh, knowing the families better. Mm. Right, even uh, from so, that age, even from that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, um, so Manish being the uh, this secret, uh, only between both of us. Manish being <laughs> only. only only brother in the family, the sisters lovingly send him back every weekend with all the guju, guju snacks. So, oh so, I, so that's when I, was, I was introduced to the guju snacks and then I got to know the sisters and um, I really love their masala tea then. So, so yeah. anyway, on, on a serious note, you get to know the family better, you get to know the parents better, you know, then, then you'll know who you're working uh, 
dealing with right yeah. the relationship right yeah uh, the family values uh, being religious uh, spiritual uh, yeah. And, yeah so so and good cooks as well good cooks yeah yeah good cooks yeah, yeah. so so um so that started off but but then uh, we we went separate ways i think um, after degree I, I wasn't sure what i wanted to do so when i was offered to do masters i, I stayed back and and manish went on sorry what did you both do your degree in uh manish did degree in business and i did degree in statistics <laughs> raj who are you <laughs> was that the linkedin right? version of you was that the linkedin version of you <laughs> yes yes that part of me <laughs> okay all right I'm sorry yeah, go so ahead I still don't do my masters because I wasn't decided on what to do, and Manish went on to work with uh, HSBC. Right. Right. Uh, and then uh, I, I finished my masters and joined Zeman. So so we, we still kept in touch. We meet every other week with our friends and so on. Uh, I think point came to a point when Manish called me up one night. Uh, at the time, there's no handphones, right? Uh, we had our oh, we had we had handphones. The oh, big, you, you did. Solid ones, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh. We had okay. Uh, fancy, very fancy. Yeah, Sony, Sony, Nokia, right? So, right, so he right. called me up asking me about uh, doing MBA, right? So, so uh, yeah, and he asked me about one particular college. Uh. So I asked him why, and, and I told him, you know, at this point, you can do MBA, you should go to the UK because the, the purpose of MBA is something else besides just MBA, right? Uh, it's networking and so on. Uh, when I asked him why, then he said, you know, he, it's a step way for him to start his business. So, so I told him that, hey, uh, I'm also looking at getting out and, and mentioning on my own at age of 30. So right. why, not we, why not we sit and discuss? So, so that's how we started to discuss. Then we realized that, okay, um, you know, both of us have the passion and we, we already know each other. Yeah. Uh, but what I was very, very clear is that, you know, uh, wh while we researched few uh, industries, uh, ultimately we came into this business because, again, the other the other saying that I believe is that uh, you must do what you enjoy doing and not something right. that you're not familiar with. So we concluded that both of us enjoy, you know, dealing with people, both of us enjoy solving problems. When I was in Siemens, I was involved in a few projects, Yeah. you know, when they acquired companies. So so I, I actually loved consulting and managed to love consulting and the service started this. Right. And um, that's quite unique uh, that you both started out doing something and then you found your way back to each other and decided maybe we'll partner up and um, run a company together. Yes. Uh, I, I'm just I'm just curious to know when you look back in life now, um, do you think it would be easy to partner with somebody that you didn't have such a strong bond with? Like, let's say, for example, you just knew somebody out, you know, like we, we have some sense of innocence when we are a bit younger. In university, not everything's very commercially driven. And when you grow older, maybe in your 30s or a little bit later than that, you decide to partner up. Is there a different feeling uh, that you have having known each other when you were younger versus if you met somebody else when you were 20s, late 20s, early 30s? Do you think the relationship will be different? I think so, Ethel. I think uh, it, yeah, it is different. And in fact, if you look at a number of partnerships uh, who have succeeded or otherwise, uh, the difference could be that factor itself, right? So like yeah. what uh, Raj mentioned earlier, I think our foundation was very much about getting to know each other beyond our individual selves. Um, we went beyond that to know each other's family. Until today, right? Uh, we uh, have several sessions in a year where we get both the families together, either through prayers or through uh, functions and various other things, right? And we still keep in touch with each other's family. I think that bond is, is like like how you do the marriage bond as well, right? Uh, you put families together, it brings some institutional uh, support, That's understanding, and, and some some amount of pressure as well for, yeah. for good intention purposes, right? So yeah. I think when we, we get to know each other well and we align our values, our, our, our beliefs, right? And, yeah. and many of the cultural aspects of both uh, Raj and myself, uh, we have common things. So I think that's those uh, bonds are probably holding us all the yeah. while and that keeps us uh, being accountable that keeps us uh, being tolerant i think those softer things are uh, matter more uh, in the business relationship and as friends as well than just the uh, other uh, you know financials or other those things yeah sorry raj yeah to your question whether would it be in would, it, would, it, would we have preferred to uh, go into partnership with a stranger, right? Would yeah, it, would it be yeah. yeah. So, so there are many arguments. Yeah. Yeah. There, there are many arguments, but I feel when you're young, it's best to go with someone that you know, because when you go with a stranger, uh, first and foremost, uh, if the goal is about let's get, get as partners and make money, then it's wrong. It's short-sighted. 
Secondly, when he's a stranger, there's no skin in the game, right? You know you can exit anytime. But when you're going with a partner, you know the family, you know that you are in there for a long uh, haul, right? And you know that you can support each other, this, there's a backup for each other. Uh, add, adding to that, the, the beauty is, you notice, at a young age when we started partnering, um, there are a lot of backups. We actually support each other and back up each other, right? So we can still go on our holidays, one will stay back, one will go, and, and so on. Right. Uh, so these are the benefits of partnering someone that, that you know at a younger age. Yeah. Uh, when you partner at a partner the stage at a young age, I think it's more of let's test it. If it doesn't work out, let's break up. Then there's no point. You're you're, you're oh. wasting your, your early years. I agree. I, I I definitely agree with that. And I also like that sense of innocence of a bond that is pure. Um, when we are a bit younger, I guess when we grow a bit older, we become a few more things. You know, like a little bit more of a baggage, or a little bit more yeah. jaded, or a little bit more commercially driven, or you know, you have the family and the risk involved in having to look after the family. Um, and uh, it just it's nice speaking to both of you because I can even feel the energy as being so calm and chill and like clean. And, you know, it's just nice. Swamiji um, Manish and Swamiji Raj. <laughs> <laughs> well, Swamiji Manish because he's very wise and then the comedian Raj, right? <laughs> Swamiji Raj. Yeah. Once in a while, hours, yeah. I mean, look at the way Raj is sitting. I mean, look at the way Manish is sitting. He's so chill. He's like, you know, I'm, I am a bit of a, you know, that wise, wise man over here. So, um, well, yeah. hard to believe that you would have ever gone through hard times, but I'm sure in every partnership there would be some challenges, um, especially when you go through new phases or stages in both your personal as well as your professional lives. Um, are you okay to share some of these challenges that you, you would have faced? Sure. I'll, I'll go first, Raj. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> so, uh, both of us had limited corporate exposure. We had some, but both of us had probably less than five years of corporate exposure. Mm -hmm. uh, and by that time, uh, we, we took the plunge and said, take the risk and let's, let's aim uh, to be business uh, owners, right? Mm -hmm. So, when we started in 2001, uh, I would say we are still at the early 30s, right? Yeah. Uh, but we had that passion, we had the risk appetite, and mm -hmm. we had the drive, and, you know, uh, we said, let's go for it, right? But mm -hmm. as we started our year upon year, right, uh, we, we stumbled upon uh, new things that we, we never knew earlier. Uh, mm -hmm. As we expand, you have more people. How do you manage people? Uh, we mm -hmm. came from organization where we had managed projects, we had managed some people, but we didn't get our hands dirty throughout uh, that period that we can say we can bring that same experience to business. So a yeah. lot of our experience was through, I would say, uh, falling down, getting up, and, and all those sort of challenges. Even uh, the business had a lot of dependence as, on us as uh, business partners. So sometimes when we make decisions, uh, it may not be the best decision for the business. Mm. I'll, I'll cite you one example about two years back uh, when we were planning for ag aggressive growth in ASEAN. Uh, we were focusing very much on the purpose of the business is to grow and bring the profits, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the team was saying, okay, let's do it. But uh, we did not check and balance uh, whether we were uh, ready. Did we do our stress test? Did we have sufficient mm -hmm. uh, resources in place? So when we started growing without uh, having the whole uh, uh, bandwagon ready, we started mm -hmm. falling down and we started having mm -hmm. people leaving the organization. And when mm -hmm. that happened, it had a spiral effect on the business. So right. then we had to take a stop and say, let's take two steps back, right? Mm -hmm. uh, let's go back to what's the core of the business, which is people. Mm -hmm. Let's get our bench strength uh, in place first. Mm -hmm. Then we take the leap. So we, right. we all throughout the years, right? In uh, Almost 20 years, we have got many of those uh, learning experience and Raj will share the same, right? Uh, yeah. I think uh, one thing we have been quite consistent uh, mm. Sometimes we get distracted, but we, we tend to try to be consistent. Is We try to put people first, profit later. Mm. We try to do, do that consciously. Sometimes it doesn't work for us. Uh, we make mistakes as well. But mm. we try, whenever we make the mistake and there's a point of learning, we start pulling up the brake and say that, hey, uh, what worked for us in the past, let's stick to that guns. Mm. Yeah. That, that, that's always valuable. Very hard, easier to say than, yeah. than do when uh, survival instincts kick in. But Raj, what would you say would, were, you know, maybe some of the yeah. challenges that... Um, yeah. so if you're keen to know the hard, uh, 
hard times uh, we, we faced uh, to the partnership. So to be really honest, funnily, I mean, probably we are, we are blessed uh, because of our spiritual path and, and our relationship. Um, I think at early uh, stage of business, there will be uh, sometimes when when we have to make uh, decisions and uh, when you when you're young you have raging uh, you know uh, energy with you and so on so you, you want to push some ideas but we realize that at the end of the day uh, both of us are in, in this for the business it's not it's not about be firm right what's in it for me it's one mm -hmm. what in it for the business so we, mm -hmm. we realize that you know uh, when when things are, are probably getting tense we step back we analyze first about the business not about you or me mm -hmm. uh, so that is the early stage, and and I I think we are blessed because uh, probably the relationship is very strong. is 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 the fun is the foundation of the whole business mm. that we are, we are already aligned. We we already know what's going to happen, and uh, we we assure each other that we make a joint decision. Uh, if anything goes wrong, we stick to it. Mm. Right. Mm. So so that's one. So to answer your question, touch wood. Uh, I've not, we've not had any hard times to the partnership. Mm. Uh, and in the in the. In our firm, CNG, uh, the the hard time was um, somewhere about 2014 uh, at, at the peak of the industry in Malaysia. Uh, mm -hmm. There were many firms that were offering contingent, which means they you only pay on success, and uh, we did not enjoy doing that. And and we had a large team uh, to manage. Uh, it was a taking it was taking a toll on our team, uh, taking a strain on them. Uh, and I wasn't enjoying the job because we prefer to do uh, long term, you know, uh, retained uh, consulting work. Mm -hmm. uh, actually. I, I didn't enjoy it and, and uh, we decided to then pull the brakes uh 2015 mm -hmm. we made a clear decision to start saying no to clients mm -hmm. for, for certain mm -hmm. jobs right mm -hmm. uh, and we started being only retained and and since then we never turned back because we actually loved mm -hmm. spending more time with clients uh, looking at their business plans looking at how uh, you know a certain leadership profile will help uh finding mm -hmm. a leader coaching him or coaching her on the on the on the, on the firm and you know mm -hmm. so uh, it was a tough decision but we we have no regrets and and we still mm -hmm. stick to the decision that once a decision is made, uh, if it fails, we are in it together. Uh, it's not your fault or my fault. Mm. Yeah, that's um, that's, that's really interesting. Like, uh, I think a lot of us end up doing things that we don't like or we don't enjoy, and we then just stick to it because you know. I think a lot of fear and maybe the patterns of the past, um, fear of an unknown, whether it's going to work out, sure. um, and then you know, doing it independently, making an independent decision on your own to break past from a pattern is quite hard. Does it help when you have a partner that you are able yeah. to speak to about these kind of things? Of course, all the time, all the time. I think it mm -hmm. goes beyond the professional journey as well. Uh, yeah, Raj would know almost every of my secret. Probably he wouldn't know nothing that I I know of. <laughs> he so, might know more I, than you do. <laughs> I might, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think beyond that, I think it just keeps us being transparent, right? And that also has an impact on our accountability as well. So when mm. we are transparent, uh, we mm. carry the same values of you know, being honest, uh, you know, having the tolerance as well. Uh, mm. We both take accountability on each of the business. Mm. Raj leads the search business, I lead the outsourcing business. So mm. we take the accountability that we are so-called champion for each of the business, but we make a number of decisions jointly and we take accountability mm. of it. So mm. uh, because we are friends as well, yeah, uh, becomes a little bit uh, challenging sometimes. How do you draw the line between friendship and business decisions? Because sometimes mm -hmm. you need to make hard decisions. So that's why we say that if we are leading each other's, which each each of the firm part of the group, mm -hmm. we'll we will make the decisions for each of the company, but we'll be jointly accountable for that, and mm -hmm. that helps us to keep going the business. And until today, we have uh, regular reviews of the business. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, you know uh, regular sessions every month. To ensure that we are aligned to each other and if you are not aligned we add value to each other and say that what can we do better mm. yeah. the other point that i must share with you is that uh, you find it interesting uh, especially in an owner-run business and i think probably we, we talk about it uh, our team sees us every day uh, and and they they know the relationship that we have and i must tell you that we have a great team with us uh, there are a few of them who have been with us like now 17 years nine uh, 15 years and, and uh, you know uh, in, in two digit uh, years uh, and they all carry the same values. They carry the same behavior, same respect for people, uh, because they see that in us. Uh, so, uh, one thing that we do every year, and and the old team knows about it, the new team like, oh, okay, yeah, is that we when we celebrate each other's birthday, uh, you know the Indian culture, right? Uh, uh, Forty of the photos will be feeding your father and feeding your mother and feeding the whole family, right? So when so our birthday celebrations after we cut our cake, uh, if it's my birthday I'll, and I'll feed Manish, his birthday he'll feed me. 
and, and the team observes them, right? So, so they're like, wow, you know, some of them are like, oh, it's something different. Um, but yeah, that, 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 those are some of the things that we continue until today. Mm, that's so endearing. So the team emulates that's, the, the, yeah. the values, yeah. There's this sense of ritual that I'm also sensing that, you know, keeps, thing, keeps things um, as sort of a memor memorabilia or something like that, you know, it's just yeah. a nice remembrance the way that people remember the two of you. The other ritual oh, yeah. we have is that uh, when, we, when, when we have new employees on board, uh, whether it's my team or manager's team, uh, we, will, we will take them on, on, on a tour of the office, right? Uh, especially in this, in the, now the team does it, but when we do it, we will take them to a room and tell them, okay, we tell you who's our boss, who we report to. Hmm. And that's our altar, prayer altar. So they'll be like smiling. I said, so me and Manish until now, before we start work, uh, we say hello to our boss. Hmm. Right? Uh, prayer altar, we say, our, I mean, we change the water, do the prayers, and, and then we get to work. So even the team knows, don't disturb us until our prayer is done first. So these are, these are things. And, and, and yeah, be, uh, something we started early years, we tell our team, right, all of you before you start your work, whatever your faith may be, spend five minutes saying a prayer. Because when I mean, all of you pray, we all have a good life. That's really powerful. That's really powerful. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, religion is one thing, but just having uh, somebody more superior that holds more power above you and you are bestowed upon that. And the yes. truth of that is extremely powerful. It's very humbling, kind of keeps you uh, sticking to a very, uh, uh, staying on course when it becomes very difficult to do so. I got to be careful what I say. You actually tap on the screen, uh, feeding birthday cakes to each other. <laughs> well, even if I don't type it out, <laughs> this is all recorded, my friend. <laughs> it's the little, little things that we do. Sometimes it's, it's probably more meaningful for us than just running the business. Mm. So it's interesting since we, we started our businesses, uh, both Raj and me, uh, and I, I'm, I'm quite okay to, and I'm sure Raj is okay to share we we have very similar things in our lives we, right. we drive same cars we we have same handphones uh, like those things we keep a lot of things uh, nostalgic among us right yeah. so kind of say, let's stick to some basic things and maybe it, it may not mean uh, so much to the outer world but to probably mm -hmm. both of us uh, these things mean mean a little bit more wow wow oh my god it's like, it's like uh, BFF. Sorry? It's like BFF. <laughs> BFF. I can't see it. It's like BFF. <laughs> that's awesome. That's that's yeah. really um, you know, there is this sense that you know, during hard times, obviously, especially in business, uh, a lot of the solopreneurs, the ones who are on their own, uh, they may not have family members or they may not have co-founders, and they're on their own. They always say that it's very lonely at the top, yeah. and uh, your struggles are kept within you, you try not to bring it to your family. And so this way, that actually is a huge, while you're taking some risks at some points in time, uh, there's a huge buffer and protective uh, uh, shield that supports yeah. you, that's been supporting you as well. Right. Um, yeah. So uh, what were some really wonderful surprises? Some really, you know, when you look back, you're like, wow, that was just, that made the relationship completely worth it. So what were moments where you remember now and you're like, it just makes you remember how worth it the relationship is? I think there are many, probably I just start with one, right? Uh, in the early years of our business, uh, somewhere close to about six or seven years when we started, uh, we decided to participate in a award session for young uh, Indian entrepreneurs, right? Yeah. I think it was 2009, right, Raj? Yeah. Yeah, 2009. Uh, so we judged by a committee, uh, and, and as usual, we will always do things together. Uh, so the committee saw both of us and asked us all the difficult questions, right, uh, to assess our suitability for the award. And uh, we, we did our best in, in the session, but the judges were saying that our awards goes to one person, one company. Mm. Uh, so you guys are unique. So either you guys decide one of you are participating or perhaps you may be disqualified. So we decided that we, we're definitely not going to go solo uh, because that, that's never been our intention. Uh, if anything happens, it's going to be R&M, okay? Uh, so we said uh, to the judges, what's wrong in making an, an exception? We respect your opinion, uh, but we are representing a company and the company is formed with two pillars. 
So if you think it's fair, uh, why don't you rethink about your uh, assessment? And yeah. If you're not in, fine. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think they did some deep thinking, and after uh, some of the influence that we shared, they said that uh, perhaps this is the first time, and perhaps also the only time we are going to make an exception for you guys. So they uh, listened to us eventually, and we were we were lucky that we were second runner up for the award. So I think this was something. Uh, down the memory lane, right? For us to think that you know, if we're sticking together and we say the right thing to the people, uh, they will listen if there's uh, authentic views, uh, there's valid reasons to to listen to us. So until today, uh, we we never participate in any single awards uh, at all. Yeah, I'm just thinking that was that the first time that you won an award? Yeah, that's the first yeah. time. Yeah, but to give first a context time, right? to that, uh, yeah, better to give a context to that. Um, yeah, that's the first time. Before all that happened, uh, the organizers actually called us out, saying that you were nominated for this. The call came to me, right, and saying that someone nominated you for this, and we declined. We said, we're not interested. Uh, we only go for join. And they asked why. I said, if your motive is to inspire young entrepreneurs uh, to get into a business and grow, uh, why they have to be solo? You can also tell them that by finding a good partner, you can also make it big. And we declined. We declined the invitation, and they came back within two weeks saying that our board wants you to reconsider i said i only reconsider if it's joint right and right? And, 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 and the board asked us right uh, so why yeah. did he and then i said that's a fact how can anyone comment uh, how can anyone say that this is a, a single person's work yeah i i think um you know i'm just i'm just imagining this could sound like a small thing but but it's actually a really big thing because it's the first time that in your professional lives you are receiving an award that is already probably something that you're looking forward to and you're like Oh my God, it's finally here. This is the moment. Let me just go, you know, just have to put my arm out a little bit and I'll be able to get it. Just put my arm out and I'll get it. But somebody puts a condition over there. And now you've got your ambition, you've got your everything that you've done, just one arm's length away, but you have to decline it or you chose to decline it. Um, can you imagine the repercussions on your relationship had uh, Raj said, yeah, okay, no problem. And Manish is like, yeah, it's okay. You know, I, I just want you to be happy. Do you think that would be a repercussion on your relationship had you gone solo for that award? I mean, wouldn't even have gone. If, if Manish had said that, I'd say, no, I'm not going. Yeah. Yeah. If you didn't, I think you our didn't conscience, have gone. Has been conscience, conscience. Uh, uh, conscience has been reasonably clear. And that's why I think the back to your previous question, right? That uh, bonding as friends uh, of being uh, one brand together mm -hmm. uh, was a very strong fundamental for us. Yeah, I, I love, uh, you know, I'm just going to put up a banner as well. Uh, you need to have a very solid conscious to win and lose together. Yes. Um, and I think it's in times like this, you know, the the, 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 the the times where you're so excited about something and the times where you're so dejected. Uh, these are the defining moments. Yeah. Uh, it carries, when, when was this? 2009, right? So that's yeah. like 11 years ago. You don't forget these things. You yeah. don't forget. But, uh, but, but let me tell you about my, my wonderful surprise, right? So uh, when I yeah. got married in 2004, uh, Manish was know, knowing the organizer he is. He was the man behind the planning for the wedding, and his wife Alpa was the MC. For your brother, wedding? Yeah, and my brother Krishna, uh, so wife and uh, Alpa and Krishna, and that, that was the worst okay. decision I made because both of them, are, you know, they took the opportunity to wreck me on the day but Manish, Manish organized the whole wedding uh, with his usual planning tools <laughs> so there's something I, I've, seen him. Sorry? I've seen that side of him now uh -huh. <laughs> it's much needed though it's a, it's, a, it's a very valuable thing to have but yeah so yeah. he basically got you married then Raj yes yes yeah. no, I, I think it's, it's this is where we say the families get together I think it's nice to have uh, a number of people uh, as part of the warm culture mm. and, and until today we do that right many a times uh, example Raj family has a temple in Gomba and Nathal I think you've been there as well yeah I have uh, we yeah and to go to the same temple together do prayers likewise we have function in each other's houses or prayers all those things are very uh, necessity so it's a we don't need to invite mm. uh, example Raj and his family it's understood yeah. that they are part of the organization so likewise I've barely seen any photos of you guys separately, even holidays and stuff like that. You're together, yeah. um, got lots of meals together, a lot of uh, meetings with friends together. More often than not, when I catch up with the, with, it cannot, it's hardly ever one one or the other. It's, it's typically yeah. both. Um, 
okay, I know this is not part of the interview questions, but does it get boring a little? It's like sometimes do you get bored of each other? <laughs> or is it like uh, if he's not there, something is missing? Yeah, no, never, never boring. Yeah. Never got bored, huh? So, so, so if you we, see we, the core, we, the core is always together, but the people around us are different groups, right? Yeah. Right, 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 right. So that's first true. of all, yeah, I think with Raj, yeah. with Raj, you don't get bored. The, that's the first thing, right? <laughs> uh, second is, what happens is Raj, friends and family have become my friends and family, likewise, yeah. right? So yeah. I think there hardly anyone that uh, Raj or me wouldn't know among our, our inner that's circle. Right? Yeah, that's and, true. Uh, you have in, both are very inviting in that group. So everyone tends to know. So like, you know, if Raj Cousins has a wedding, and I don't know the cousin very well, the cousin will still call me for the wedding. <laughs> wow. Right? So I think it's understood that it's the given thing now that we are part of the same circle. Your calendars must be fully booked. It must be fully, <laughs> That's okay. fully booked. Um, so what does the future hold for both of you? And, and by the way, I think, you know, I think it's it, it, uh, maybe just, you know, sometimes people don't talk about it, but... I will just put it out there. I think about death all the time. And I, I always think like, you know, that moment before, that moment before, what would I think about? What are things that, you know, would make me leave the world in peace? And I think it's precisely these moments um, when, when you've had people around you who've loved you for super long periods of time and it's just made everything worthwhile. Everything's just been worthwhile because of you people. So. You know, God bless the 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 the, the friendship, the 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 family ship, the business ship as well. Um, what is the future hold for both of you? Where where do you see yourselves going? If you're okay to share that. Okay. Uh, on a lighter side, I think. Uh, Raj, <laughs> myself, Sorry, yeah. and, uh, Raj, myself, and a few of us were thinking of uh, staying in one apartment when we grow old, and uh, have fun at the at that age. Uh, so on a lighter side, we've been talking about it that. Uh, we won't wow. want to depend on too many family members. We still want to party at at, a, at our own uh, way of doing things and all. So we are talking among a few of our friends that maybe we'll get into that. Uh, but oh I think on the, on the on the business side, I think uh, next uh, so-called 20 years is going to be much more crucial. Uh, I'm excited and, uh, and I think it's going to be much more interesting because we have 20 years of experience and perhaps another 20 years to reach to the peak of the mountain where we are yes. now, right? Yeah, so it's almost like you just of, started. <laughs> exactly. So you need to think what legacy we're going to leave behind, uh, who is going to run the business uh, thereafter. I, I think we mm -hmm. need to make ourselves so much more attractive after this, right? Uh, that uh, someone would want to uh, be with us. Yeah. Uh, whether uh, there's an acquisition, whether there's a merger or whatever continuation, whether our team takes over or family takes over, all that are, are things that we didn't we don't plan as, as per now. But I think most important for us is to make the business as attractive as possible. Fantastic, yeah. So while we have uh, aligned ourselves with a lot of global players, I think we also need to strengthen ourselves and ensure that we are ready uh, when the day comes, right? Where we need to pass the baton as well. Fantastic, a lot of succession planning as well there. Yes, yes. Yeah, and I love the idea of having that shared apartment. That is, that is such a smart thing to do. That's like probably the smartest... Mm. Uh, retirement plan I've ever heard. Um, Raj, what's uh, what's the future for you? So my future is still the same. Um, I'll I'll think about Manish's idea. I haven't opened up my mind yet. Okay, my my <laughs> dream my dream has always been uh, to own a pub on the beach and uh, you know have a nice live music live band probably I'll be right. performing. Uh, chatting yeah. with my favorite. But then now I moved to Buraki and 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 so on. That is that is still a distance. Now you have moved to what? My, the ideal location could be Buraki. Oh, Baraka. Okay, I see. Uh, uh, nice, fancy. nice pub. Nice very pub. Fancy. Right? Yeah, very, very yeah, yeah. fancy. You know, small boutique -ish, You know. Yeah. Uh, I, call you, I, I call you over, but oh, uh, you know, there. <laughs> the, but the beauty, the beauty in executive search, uh, especially within our own alliance, the oldest partner is seventy-four years old. So the beauty about executive search is that, as I told you earlier, uh, a hair hunt is like a bottle of wine. The more aged you are, the higher your value is. So I can yeah. still do hair hunting while I'm on the beach in Baraka. <laughs> I, I think, yeah, you just want to be careful about what talent you're looking out for. Yeah. Uh, that's it. <laughs> yeah. But now with COVID, all that is... Yeah, but it, <laughs> temporary. I like Manish's idea. So we might get to <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> reality. We might yeah. get a photo around Bangsa or KLCC closer to supermarkets, closer to bars. And so 
you know, uh, have clinics, whatever. Uh, yeah, that is what. But within work, yeah, in, in terms of work, I, I see us uh, doing more work with clients in a bigger scale. You know, um, yeah. we want to be part of a greater success, right? Um, and yeah. our purpose has always been in executive search and payroll. Uh, our purpose has always been impacting people's lives, and that explains to you why I get involved in DNI and human leadership. So in, in, in terms of candidates, we want, to, we, want to, we want to make sure that whoever we place one year down the road, they'll think about us for giving them a great job. Uh, clients, yeah. were able to, clients were able to have peaceful nights. Uh, they must thank us for being a great partner. So, yeah. so that will continue, but probably our range of services might expand. Uh, COVID has shown a lot of uh, you know uh, ideas to us, uh, open mm. up a new, whole new horizon. Uh, so we've got to look at how we do it. But I think we still remain, you know, uh, being a partner to client uh, in the area of talent acquisition to talent uh, development. Yeah, yeah. Well, that sounds uh, sounds like you're just getting this party started. Yeah, and I always tell our team, right? Uh, I tell our team that you know we still when we celebrate our birthdays. We we see ourselves in 2040, all of us still working in the same company with a wheelchair, coming in to do payroll. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, come on, both of you have black hair skill, okay? So uh, you got, you got a long, long, long way to go. Long, long yes, way to go. Yes. And, you know, um, just for for people who are in partnerships, business partnerships, or uh, they're thinking of getting into partnerships um, or having difficulties in their partnerships, what is a solid advice that you want to leave them with? Hmm. I think is first is the beginning of the partnership right uh, uh whether you choose a friend or you choose a, a, someone who is from the professional background uh important to have a partner who you could uh, uh both partners will have different set of skills that they can complement each other yeah right? yeah and, and you would see by now that both of us are, are different but i think the different brings the synergies and strength uh, for the business right mm -hmm. uh, very important if you don't complement each other then mm -hmm. there will be more frictions. Like you can't have two right brains or two left brains, right? right. And you have a lot more friction. So uh, that's one. Second, I think, is the values that both partners carry. It has to be mm -hmm. uh, brutally discussed. Uh, it shouldn't be hidden or I should know or you should assume kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if you're honest, you're honest from day one, right? You, you don't choose to be inconsistently honest. Uh, yes, that's fantastic. All, all those things have to be very clearly uh, managed and, and discussed, right? And I think uh, what has been a, a, a differentiation factor for us is how we can get the your families and, you know, the, the groups who are associated to, together with you also up to an extent uh, merge together so that there's a lot more common things that you can do together and you're much more mm. united. Mm. Right. Um, that's fantastic. You, uh, Manish, I think you have a good space in the spirituality realm, honestly. Really, I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of wisdom. I think. I think. Well, you know, one the one that I really liked. Uh, uh, the one thing that came out the most was values must be, values must be brutally discussed. Mm. I like that a lot. Yeah, Raj. Uh, any advice from you? Yeah, I think uh, from uh, day one, uh, it has to be equal. So it has to be first of all. It's not about one. What's in it for me? It's about uh, why are we together? What's the purpose they're looking at? Not. How much can I earn if, if I make a profit? How much you get and how much I get? That's too trivial. Uh, don't partner. So everything has to be equal. So to give you an idea, right? I, we, I missed the story. Uh, so when we started business, uh, Manish was uh, having a young family. He was with HSBC. I was a bachelor, still having fun. Uh, mm -hmm. I was in Siemens, right? So I yeah. could see a, a risk if, if, we, if you are really bold to leave at the age of 30, 31. So uh, we, we saw a risk, and it's all joint risk and joint gains, right? So. Uh, Manish had, by then, he already had Tushar, who was like oh, just one year old, and he just had uh, a beautiful girl, Mehak, at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, Alpha was, you know, uh, here, and, and he was with HSBC. Uh, so we decided that, you know, uh, I'll step out first. So now the skin in the game is when we discussed and Manish willingly uh, said that both of us will share my salary. Mm -hmm. So for, for that to happen is trust. Mm. Right, uh, and and we were very careful uh, to run at very bare cost. Uh, mm -hmm. So every month when he gets salary, then he'll just bear, you know uh, bank in half, and we just run on on thin resource and and uh, grew the business, and and less than eight months. So April we started in in uh, October. He looked at it. He said, hey, "Should I resign?" I said, "Yeah, think about it." So they had mm -hmm. a family conference uh, at the time. Uh, so made a decision and he resigned. Uh, January he started, and then we never looked back. We flew, right. So one is being equal and, and having a skin in the game, right? It's not about, you know, one being lesser or one being more. 
Yeah, if, it, if it doesn't work, I'm going to leave, right? Mm. Uh, and always, if anything happens, having the trust in the relationship, when anything happens, step back. Because it's, it's all about, you know, uh, being jailed by, by the incident at the time. And then mm. it keeps on why me, right? So you've got to step back, reassess, and have a different perspective. Mm. Uh, and then discuss. Mm. Right? Uh, so that, that's the, the other important point of the partnership. And third is, uh, we, we learned five years ago, right? Uh, because we are best mm. of friends, we are best of partners, there's what you call the shock syndrome moment, right? Uh, your idea yeah. is smart, my idea is smart. Wow, both of us are brilliant. Yeah. So then we realized that, you know, uh, there is an element of group thinking. I will not mm. challenge you because I'm a friend, you won't challenge me because I'm a friend. Right? Uh, some some right. Uh, biases there, right? So then we realized that occasionally we also need to have mentors, uh, we need coaches. So we also, uh, within the IRC network, we get more ideas, so we have more CEOs in the group, we get more ideas, and then we bring the ideas to the table. So again, uh, we shouldn't, uh, to be fair to the partnership, we shouldn't just rely on our own intelligence, on our own intellect. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. we, should, we should add more value to the discussion by uh, mm -hmm. seeking advice from others. Mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, yeah, so it's, it's all about that. It's, so it's continuous, continuous growth. Uh, I always mm -hmm. believe you stop growing when you stop learning. Yeah, so, absolutely. Partnership, yeah, the partnership is to learn. Yeah. Um, I think one thing that came out, um, which I thought was really bold. Um, so one of it is, uh, as you mentioned, brutally and consistently discuss your values. Uh, and the other thing that Raj was saying is that I think a lot of us, we can identify certain risks of being with the person or with that person's circumstances and to have the courage to and honesty to actually talk about it uh, and make a very clear decision on it. Uh, I think it's the small things that brew and brew and brew and brew. If you didn't iron it out from the start, uh, it becomes very heavy. I also like what you what you say about um, stepping back. Um, I think it's in that one moment where you lose your cool, where you lose everything. Um, all the good stuff that you've done in the past kind of gets lost. And also um, the shoks and diri, uh, either as independents or together, um, and making sure that you break away from that group thing to include other people. So there, there are so many, my God, you should uh, write a book. <laughs> the money uh, dead always uh, advise us, right? Uh, and there's some, um, so you should be glad that I'm taking notes because then you can write oh. a book on this already now. <laughs> so my dad dead always uh, bear in mind, he advised me and, and uh, there's one time when, when his mother passed away, I, I was in the ICU and mom passed away, the late mom, and he, uh, he my dad hugged me and then he whispered to me, right, uh, thanks for being by his side, thanks for supporting him, and he says, may God, God, may God bless both you, uh, both of you as a friends. Uh, and he always reminds his advice, right? Uh, first of all, uh, never allow ego to overshadow the relationship. Second is don't allow jealousy to overshadow the relationship. So there, there can be outsiders who, who say things. Uh, and, and always, you don't take care of each other. So that always rings my mind. Uh, because touch wood, nothing has happened to us. But I always mm -hmm. tell myself, it, it can be a third person who will just, you know, uh, drive a wedge into the relationship. So we got to be careful about all these things which we thought never happened, but it may happen if someone else does it. Yeah, I think that those are fabulous words and that's why, um, you know, the elders or the parents who, they're probably the only ones who, not the only ones, but definitely you trust them when they say certain things. Yeah. And you listen. You know, other people say it, you'll be like, yeah, whatever. Um, yeah, and I've obviously met Uncle before as well, Manisha's dad, amazing, such a ch nice, wonderful, chilled out person. Um, but we've reached over 45 minutes, <laughs> but it's obviously felt like a wonderful, easy conversation. Um, I think it, well, for me, it really warms my heart to know that there are such amazing uh, partnerships out there and people who consistently focus on values and um, consistently make collected decisions. Yeah. And especially during hard times. Yes. And it's always these stories that, that warm our heart anyway. So thank you for doing that. Uh, obviously, it wasn't for me, but um, yeah, I have completely forgot about uh, our guests. I am so sorry, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. There are a few questions over here. Um, so uh, one of our friends says, this sort of partnership is very rare. We're both beyond, uh, both look beyond the financials of the business. Wish you both the best. I am so sorry you made the statement a while ago. I completely got immersed in the conversation. I uh, did a moment of shock cindery, apologize. Lisa, um, you're amazing. You're always here, listening in, tuning in. Um, you always make me feel like I'm not, or we're not talking to ourselves. Lisa says, 
uh, or asks, how do you deal with a scenario where your partner has a different mindset? One feels like doing, <laughs> this is so specific. Example, one feels like doing webinars is the way to go, but another feels that it isn't. Uh, or marketing techniques, um, i.e. one who feels that we should go with people while another feels work will overcome trust in God. So I guess dichotomy, dichotomous views and how do you deal with uh, dichotomous views and maybe even when there's commercials involved? Okay, I, I think uh, generally I think our practices is uh, and very similar to what uh, Ethel, you have also mentioned to me uh, sometime back, right? Uh, leaving the ego out of the office, right? Very mm -hmm. important, leaving the ego out of the office. So uh, I think one of the secret ingredient in a good partnership is listening skills, right? So if an idea like that comes, right, we listen, right? We don't make judgments. We ask and seek for clarification, right? Now, if if that um, example, the proposal comes for uh, one of the businesses, we'll say that, okay, if you're accountable for the business, let's go for it. So then mm. you take some amount of risk, right? But then yeah. again, you will check and balance, okay, after a month, two months, how is it going on? So should yeah. we just realign again? So mm. I think it's listening, giving that uh, freedom, right? If the person has done... Uh, research or has got enough of knowledge and then mm. moving forward so you have to take some risks definitely in, in any partnership mm. right and you have to yeah. trust that person that the person came with some ideas uh, with some amount of ex either experience or some amount of research so I think there's no right and wrong here but I think it's giving that amount of uh, listening skills and, and trust as well yeah that's fantastic um, great advice uh, Raj did you want anything to, did you want to add to anything so going back on the trust, if there are partners, I'm sure uh, at, the, at the beginning, you would have already identified what is each other's uh, functional expertise. So like in the case of me and Manish, uh, his functional expertise is finance and, and the business is payroll. Uh, my functional expertise is marketing, comms, you know, sales, and my uh, functional expertise, uh, sorry, business expertise is uh, search. So mm -hmm. definitely when it comes to finance, I'll tend to rely on his advice more. Yeah, I'll, I'll then ask questions to bounce off this is far and then until I'm satisfied again, right? It's, it's a relationship that comes first, right? Uh, we, we know that whatever money is suggesting if it's finance is for the business. Mm. So if yeah. that is if that is nailed, uh, there's no personal interest. Yeah. And if, and if that's expertise, go with this expertise, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, what is important is to then uh, spar because sometimes, yes, there, there are areas they may not have seen and they may rely on our perspective. Yeah. So likewise on marketing, right? So so I'll have better overview of marketing, so I may give ideas on marketing. And his, mm -hmm. his uh, you know, uh, gut feel would be to follow mine because I've done more marketing. Yeah. So respect yeah. the boundaries. Uh, so example, yeah. if, I'm, if I'm not a strong finance person, I will not fight hard for a finance decision because I personally, I don't think uh, there's the best solution. So the company will fail because of my uh, ignorance. Yeah. What I'm, what I'm recognizing now is that both of you obviously have also... Uh, you have not been lazy. Uh, and I, I choose this word because I'm trying to build on something else. Uh, sometimes we get lazy in ourselves and lazy in the relationship. Uh, so what you've obviously done is work very hard on yourselves to be a competent partner on the table. That's number one that I can sense. Uh, because if you didn't trust that the other one was com competent, it would be very hard yeah, yeah, to trust, just trust the person completely. Yeah. Uh, and the other thing is that you have also not been lazy to work on the relationship while you are working through a challenge. Yes. Um, so yeah, I think um, uh, leaving that ego out is one thing. But if you're dealing with somebody who is also, you, you deem that person's not very competent and you have to do it for the sake of the relationship, it can become very unbearable after yeah. a period of time yeah. as well. So you yeah. have, uh, you know, you have uh, worked against this typical notion in a relationship or with ourselves where we become lazy. You've worked very hard to, to prove that yourselves and each other as well. So that's awesome. And that's um, pretty much the questions that we have. I'm um, so grateful to have had both of you. You've actually uh, struck a few nerves in me and uh, I will definitely hope to strive to be a better person and a better partner after this as well. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ito. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're most thank welcome. You Check in on the WhatsApp. I'm going to have to take a screenshot and put it on our WhatsApp group. <laughs> yeah. Okay, sure. Bye. Thank you, Adele. Take care. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Yeah, thank, thank you so much, everyone else, for listening. Uh, and again, my name is Adele. Uh We have today uh, Raj and Manish, um, who are appropriate partners and run a company called CNET G Asia. And we're talking about how 
these two wonderful men who are very, very mature and wise uh, have made their partnership work for over 19 years in a world where it's very difficult to keep partnerships going. So thank you so much. Thank you, Ito. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. <laughs>